Hi guys, today I'm going to be bringing you a video about the AMD Phenom X6 processors. The full specs of the system that I'm using today will be on the screen any moment now, but I will be using an AMD Phenom X6 1090T 6 core processor from around 2010. On a side note, I've got a lot of fondness for the AM3 socket and just that whole era of sort of PC gaming and PC hardware. I originally built myself an AMD Phenom X6 based PC around the launch of Battlefield 3, as I would imagine many other people did at the time. It was a huge upgrade driver at Battlefield 3, and I did, per I did purchase it and purchased uh, all new hardware to play the game. I used a 1055T. The model in here is a 1090T, a slightly better model. Uh, there's going to be no overclocking done to this processor today. This is going to be out of the box performance of what you can expect to see from the AMD Phenom X6 in 2024. It's surprising in some ways, but also unsurprising in other ways. So first of all, a lot of modern games may not run on this CPU. I tried two games myself. There is going to be more. I tried playing Dead Space, the new Dead Space, uh, of which the CPU did not support the correct instructions, and Dying Light 2, which again, the CPU did not support the correct instructions. So some very modern games are going to just flat out refuse to launch. I paired this, proce uh, this processor with a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4GB. This is probably the maximum I would pair up with one of these processors. Maybe you get away with a 1060. I do have one of those to hand. Might go back and revisit this. Um, but I feel that the 1050 is a fairly good match for a processor, which at this point is now 14 years old. I'm really looking forward to doing this. The AMD motherboard, the AM3 motherboard that I purchased was 15 quid. And as soon as I was able to secure a fairly cheap motherboard, I knew that I was doing this project. I've got a, a lot of nostalgia for this socket, and it's one of the CPU sockets that I'm very, very confident in using. So I purchased all the random parts that I needed. I had some parts lying around, such as a mechanical drive to go with the 120 gigabyte PMY SSD that I've got the OS installed on. Um, I had the memory sticks just lying around. I have a lot of DDR3 memory just sort of around and about like I would imagine quite a few people who sort of deal with this in. Today what I'm going to be focusing on is whether the games that I have tested are actually playable. Now using my ultra incredible testing method as you can see here I'm going to be telling you how the games actually perform you know whether they're playable. There are other channels that do a better job um, of the min max metrics and things like that. I don't really want to go into that today. I want to focus mostly on the actual game performance. So first of all is Grand Theft Auto 5. This is a popular one and I've included it quite intentionally as a lot of people may still be wondering how this actually performs on the AMD Phenom based PC. Overall GTA 5 was more than playable. There were some occasions where the frame rate did dip. I'm pretty sure that this is CPU related. For Full disclosure, I think it would be fair to mention that the metrics on, that you can see on here, um, while they are the uh, correct performance metrics, I didn't have time to set up all my capture equipment. I have actually retested these um, without recording and have achieved very, very similar results. That There's a few frames in it at the most. So the numbers you see here are, are what you can expect regardless of whether you're recording or not. Maybe I'll hook my external capture card up to it, but given the very little difference I saw, I'm not actually entirely sure that it has much value. So there is a couple of frames off. You could expect a couple of frames more. I was using the PC to record to a different drive as well. So you may expect a few better frames, but GTA 5 generally performed quite well, even in the downtown section, which is a notoriously difficult section of the game. It still performed quite well. So yeah. I would say this is more than playable on the AMD Phenom X6. Quite pleasantly surprised, actually. This is a 1080p with 60% sliders on normal settings. And yeah, it's absolutely plenty good enough for GTA 5. Absolutely. Left 4 Dead 2 is next. Left 4 Dead was recorded at 1080p, high settings. I basically turned everything up to as much as I could. And yeah, once again, it's another real solid performance. This is actually uh, quite a good game to test as it's an age sort of um, sort of specific timing of Left 4 Dead 2 came out around the sort of same time as the AMD Phenom X6 series came out. 
So I think it's actually quite a, an interesting game to test along with the Phenom processor. As you can see here with the frame rate, it's absolutely fine, 120 FPS. I'm using a 144 hertz monitor. So yeah, that's a, a pretty good result. It, the game barely blinks. I played it for about half an hour and it, I could have quite easily gone from start to finish. Uh, actually through Left 4 Dead as it was really smooth, uh, quite a pleasant experience. So not really an awful lot other to be said for it. Left 4 Dead 2 played great on the Phenom. Next up we have Metro Last Light Redux, which was recorded at 1080p on very high settings. For this one, V-Sync was enabled. I played through this again for about half an hour and overall it was a very solid experience. There were some frame dips uh, from sort of 60 FPS going down to the mid 50s and high 40s. Uh, however, overall, it was once again a really playable experience. It, you could easily sit down from start to finish and uh, complete the game on this processor. Considering that this processor is from 2010, which makes it 14 years old this year, the performance of the processor is really pleasantly surprising. I really like these processors anyway. Um, but yeah, it was surprising to see the performance was still so good. 14 years after release. It's a shame about newer games. As you can see right now, the frame rate went down into these sort of mid 40s there very briefly before coming back up again. I think that this actually might be the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti that is the bottleneck as the usage was maxed out quite a few times. Metro is a very demanding game on anything really. So maybe this one could have perhaps benefited from the 1060. I was talking about a little earlier. I might revisit this one if there's enough interest. Fallout 4 is next up and it performed pretty well. It was set to 1080p at the default settings so when the game launched what happened was I simply allowed the launcher to select what the best graphical settings were for me. I did bump textures up to medium as we have 4 gigabytes of memory and I went through Concord and yeah it was pretty smooth. There are occasionally what appeared to be loading hitches uh, throughout the game. I think that might have something to do with the fact that this game was installed on an internal mechanical hard drive as the PNY hard drive that I actually had was only a well, SSD was only 120 gigabytes so fast storage was at somewhat of a premium here so I think that may be related to the mechanical storage of the, where the game was rather than an actual game performance thing but yeah once again it's more than playable these settings at 1080p and that was the main focus of my video today was it wasn't how fast can we get these things to run it is it was if I have this processor and have a, like 20 30 pounds to spend on a graphics card the you know would this processor actually run games to a, a, an acceptable degree and so far I can categorically say yes yes they can the performance overall of this processor has been pleasantly surprising so much so that I'm actually using it right now to edit this video and I think that I'm actually going to keep this as a sort of um, backup PC in my gaming room where I do my game captures for uh, the consoles and everything like that some light video editing I uh, I have a great degree of fondness for sort of this era of technology anyway so I think that I'll be keeping hold of this and actually using it myself as I've been really happy with just its general performance. You know, web browsing and things like that are still okay, but we'll we'll get a little into that later on. But Fallout 4, very playable. Next up is Battlefield 4. Battlefield 4 was at 1080p, medium settings with post anti-aliasing, capped at 60 FPS. Aside from a texture streaming kind of thing that uh, you can see sort of here, the game performed, again, really well. Uh, the game pretty much sat at sort of 50, 60 FPS all of the time with very little deviation. Uh, when there was a big explosion, it did occasionally uh, sort of hitch the frame rate down a little bit, but nothing that would make the game utterly unplayable. This is another relevant game to test with the Phenom X6, as I would imagine this was a quite a, a common setup for Battlefield 4, especially... Uh, sort of around its release time, most people would have been freshly upgraded from Battlefield 3 and would probably be running something very similar to what I am actually running here. I played Battlefield 4 for around 20 minutes. It wasn't particularly long. Um, I got kicked by Punkbuster 
uh, as I hadn't updated it and didn't really return back to it uh, after that. But yeah, Battlefield 4, single and multiplayer, uh, 1080p in medium settings, capped at 60 FPS, was once again more than playable. And next up, we have Mass Effect Legendary Edition. This is one of the newer games, although it's based off much older games, so I had a good feeling that this would run well enough. So this is Mass Effect Legendary Edition, uh, 1080p, with the default settings uh, and capped at 60 FPS. Here I am, planet side, sort of trawling around in that. And uh, yeah, overall it was playable enough. Um, I think that there were some texture streaming issues that caused a frame rate to drop from the 60s to the sort of 40s um, fairly consistently, especially. Uh, when I was out and about exploring on uncharted planets like this, once um, I was in more, the more sort of like confined areas, of the Citadel, and doing some of the more well less open world sort of missions, the frame rate did stay quite stable at uh, 60 FPS, with the occasional drop into the low mid 50s. It was really the exploration of planets that seemed to occasionally hitch the performance of the game ever so slightly. As you can see here, the processor itself actually has plenty more to give, uh, as well as the graphics card. So this could maybe have been bumped up in graphical settings a little, little bit, but I wanted to go for something that was immediately playable. So we went with the default settings for this one. But once again, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, a newer game, very playable on the AMD Phenom X6 1090T. A few general things to sort of wrap up now I have gone through a number of games. Overall, I really liked using this PC for playing games and also it was more than capable of doing my uh, sort of game recording stuff from consoles as you can see here on the screen. General usage, it was plenty snappy enough and you're quite responsive. CPU usage did seem to be high pretty much throughout my use of the machine no matter what it is I did, despite the fact that this is a 6-core CPU, it is an older CPU, and I think that on some of the things it's starting to show its age. Performance overall is more than satisfactory though, and if this was the only PC I had access to and I didn't want to particularly play anything ultra-modern, then this would suffice for what it can do. It's a little bit power-hungry, there are definitely more efficient processors on the market now, and it can be quite noisy as well despite the fact that I enabled AMD's cool and quiet uh, technology in the Asus BIOS and tweaked around with uh, fan control settings it still remains quite noisy so you know, maybe if acoustics were a problem for you this could maybe make or break that deal for you as with a TDP of 125 watts it's a very hungry processor and it can get quite warm especially if you come to overclocking the processor uh, the CPU here, actually, when I checked CPU Z, uh, runs at 1.44 volts, which is fairly high for an AMD CPU of that era. One of the first things I did with my 1055T was I undervolted it uh, fairly significantly. I did originally make a video about that on my other channel, which I unfortunately have lost access to. Um, it would be really amusing to link in, I think, so I, I might do that in a moment. But yeah, the volts are fairly high, so I'm not sure what the overclocking potential of this processor is, um, but we'll have to find out. Video playback was also more than good enough as well. So what I did was I loaded up YouTube, which I'm going to do now, like so, and 1080p playback was absolutely fine. Um, no issues with any buffering or stuttering or anything else like that. Just select 1080p on the video as you want to watch. Uh, why not try watching this one right here? And yeah, it was overall more than adequate. There was no issues with 1080p playback. There was no real issues to report of of the games that I've uh, tested here today. I'm just taking a look at my video project actually on the AMD PC now, and I've noticed I've missed one game. So let's go do that one. And that game is Crisis 2, because can it run Crisis? So this isn't the remastered version of the game, this is simply the one that EA released quite a long time ago. And yep, yeah, once again, it, it's more than playable. This was actually the one game that out of all of them I actually had some degree of issue with for some reason or other. I have not nailed down what the exact problem is. Um, but scenes of sort of like intense fighting 
would really drag the frame rate down to the mid 30s and it was quite jarring it wasn't as smooth as an experience as i would have expected i actually played through crisis 2 um, not long after its launch on an amd fenomex 61055 and a gtx 550 ti and i don't recall seeing you know don't recall ever having these particular issues so i'm not sure whether this is a, a driver issue or you know something related to the hardware that uh, you know has cropped up on this particular uh, pc but this was the only game that really gave me you know sort of is it still kind of playable sort of questions i would still argue that yes it is playable especially as the the game itself is fairly old consulting my high-tech note sheet here i had this at 1080p with high settings i didn't have the frame rate capped i just wanted to run as quick as possible and yeah it i think this just about gets a playable with a sort of caveat that there are certain firefights which really do drag the frame rate down and they're quite jarring so if you're looking for a constant 60 fps then I don't believe that you're going to find it here. Uh, there was just there was something going on um, that I couldn't quite work out that was affecting the frame rate quite significantly uh, between sort of intense firefights. It wasn't smooth enough for me to go 100%. Yes, it's playable at 1080p 60fps. It was confusing though because certain parts of the game ran absolutely fine at 1080p 60fps. And then we came to other parts and it wasn't awfully keen on actually maintaining uh, 60 fps so maybe dropping down to the magic spot of 1600 by 900 might be worthwhile maybe worth doing if you were looking to game on hardware very similar to this so ah well it was playable enough and if it's your only way of playing crisis then it could be worse overall i'm really happy with this pc in general i i have a yeah, this was a pa bit of a passion project for me. It was something I've wanted to do for a little while. Admittedly, I had to wait for the right price. Um, some of this hardware is <laughs> unbelievably actually getting quite expensive. Uh, AM3 motherboards and Fenomex 6 processors are certainly not as cheap as you would think they were. Um, whether that's because of people like me who have sort of like a nostalgia for the era or something else. I don't know, but it wasn't as cheap as, uh, say, getting a, you know, one of the early Sandy Bridge processors and motherboards to test, perhaps, because those early Intel processors, the early Intel quad cores, you can pick up for quite cheap now. I could have probably picked up three i5s for what this Phenom X6 cost me. Um, but yeah, I, I still have no regrets. This is going in my gaming room where I'm going to be using it for some light video editing as well as recording, uh, footage from my uh, xbox series s as well as the retro consoles that i also have access to anyway guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think in the comments and as a, a sort of quick final word i now have an asus rag rog ally so we'll be testing this one it's the rog ally z1 extreme so it's the best version of the ally so i'm hoping to put something together sometime soon um, for your enjoyment. Until next time guys, take care.